The term Bible bashers is sometimes used on people who never let up on quoting the Bible to prove that they're right, that you're wrong. You can stop them in their tracks by telling them, even the devil can quote scripture. That's precisely what he did today. He quotes Psalm 91 out of context, of course, inviting Jesus to do something reckless by throwing himself off the parapet of the temple where the angels would protect him. Yes, of course, we've got angels to guard us, our guardian angels they're called, but not if we do something rash or foolish or reckless. Jesus is in the desert for 40 days wrestling with how best to be the saviour of the world. He has plenty of time out there in the desert to think about it. And surely an excellent way to win people over would be to do something spectacular, as the devil suggests, quoting scripture at the same time to masquerade his deviousness. Now what a perfect publicity stunt. Who could fail to believe in him after that? Here the devil is inviting Jesus to confuse two things, to do something which looked like an act of total trusting God, jumping off the parapet, but which in the cold light of day is lunacy. Had Jesus jumped from the roof of the temple, he would have killed himself. There was no heavenly rescuer on Calvary. Why should there be one here? Some Christians are always chasing after the remarkable or spectacular, the sensational, whereas God is to be found in the ordinary. They give the impression that God can send rain from a perfectly blue sky if we pray hard enough. That is the substance of the devil's second temptation, putting the Lord to the test. Among the crowds which often accompanied Jesus in his travels, there must have been many people following him for the wrong reasons. Jesus once told the crowd that they were only following him because of the loaves he multiplied for them and they filled their stomachs. So long as Jesus was performing miracles, they'd stick around. But they had no real interest in spiritual growth, only in the spectacular. Now, when the initial excitement of the miracles wore off, they were no longer interested. The fact that Jesus so often tells people to keep quiet about his miracles on their behalf would suggest that he was continually living with the consequences of having turned down this second temptation of the devil. Yes, Jesus did perform miracles, of course he did, but only to lead people to a deeper faith in himself. The devil in the second temptation is challenging Jesus to prove his credentials by jumping off the temple, believing that he'll be held up by the angels but paradoxically, if a messiah needs to prove himself, he's not the true messiah. The real thing needs no advertising, no publicity. Now when we're genuine, we don't need to go around proving it. It'll shine through us. Performing a spectacular stunt being a kind of superman would imply Jesus was immune to human vulnerabilities. This would mean that he did not fully share our human nature, whereas the scriptures tell us, St. Paul tells us, that Jesus did not cling to his equality with God, but he emptied himself, becoming like us in all our vulnerabilities, in all things but sin. No, there would be no jumping off the temple, no publicity stunts for Jesus with which to dazzle the crowd. As was his father's will, it would be the arduous road of the cross or nothing. This sec second temptation really was about Jesus sidestepping the cross. But the devil failed in his endeavours. For Jesus, and indeed for all of us, the cross is the only road to glory. Now, thank you all for listening and God bless you all.